Attack on Titan Episode 7. While Eren keeps moving forward, he leaves a destroyed island behind him. We also have a new backstory, a very awaited character return, and a new Titan Shifter who doesn't even know he's a Titan Shifter. A lot is going on, so let's talk all about it. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for a new breakdown video for the latest episode of Attack on Titan. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to help me reach 10,000 YouTube friends. Also, come say hi to me on your favorite social media platforms and check out my brand new website and blog. And now, let's get to this week's episode, Sunset, covering chapter 125 of the manga. This episode starts with Hitch trying to help the injured people on the ground. Here we have a change to the anime, because in the anime it states that this is Trust District, which is located in Wall Rose, but on the manga it's taking place in Stoes District, in Wall Sina. Stoes is where Annie was captured, so it made more sense to just leave her there. Also, Trust is almost 300 kilometers closer to Shiganshina. Not sure why they changed it, but moving on. The destruction of the walls didn't pass on the island, judging from the destroyed houses and dead bodies all around. We see that some support Eren's actions, simply because right now he is the island's protector and his actions are for the future of the island. But from the other side, we see people who got hurt from the rumbling and even lost loved ones. For them, this is Eren's fault, but for others, it is a necessary sacrifice. So yes, maybe the rumbling will affect the island less than it will other countries, but no side remained safe in this conflict as we can clearly see the destruction in the streets and the danger of civil war between the islanders. To be ready for anything, Hitch goes to find more soldiers and weapons, but she soon notices some wet footprints on the floor. When she gets to the room, she is suddenly jumped by Annie. To remind you, Annie just broke free from the crystal after 4 years of being trapped. And although it was never addressed in the manga, we can see that Annie seems to be much smaller than Hitch, if we compare it to 4 years ago. That means that Annie's body probably remained the same inside the crystal for all those years. Hitch manages to flip Annie easily because of how weak she is right now. Annie tells her that she can turn into a titan whenever she wanted, but Hitch says that she is probably lying. But to not take any chances, Hitch doesn't turn her in, instead she smuggles her into the stables. Here we get a very important piece of information. Annie explains that she could hear Hitch and Armin talking while she was frozen. Those were the only voices she could hear, and when they were gone, she was all alone in the darkness. The conversations kept Annie from going insane while being conscious inside the crystal all this time. This is also how she knows what is going on at this moment. And of course, like every other subject of Ymir, she also heard Eren's message. As they ride together, Hitch complains that the only job she ever did while in service was to clean up dead bodies. Now, because of Eren, and also four years ago because of the titan fight Annie had with Eren inside Walsina. She asks Annie how does she feel seeing all those people dying just for the sake of their plan. She is of course referring to the warrior's mission to destroy humanity inside the walls. Annie explains that they were praised for killing people. They were encouraged to kill people outside of the borders of Marley, all that in order to atone for the sins of the Eldians of the past. All those actions were justified by Marley. But even though the warriors wanted to prevent the rumbling, Annie reveals that she didn't do what she did in order to save people. In fact, she didn't even care about that. And that triggers one of the most awaited backstories of our story, Annie's past life. Not long after Annie was born, she was abandoned as a baby. Apparently, her mom was accused of having relations with an alien. She was taken in by a subject of Ymir that came to Marley from a different country the same way Udo was brought to Marley. This person's goal was to train Annie to become a warrior one day and use that to elevate his status and to gain comfortable life. For years, the man trained Annie without compassion, teaching her the martial arts style of his native country. But time passed and Annie grew much stronger and one day she hit the man so hard she crippled him for life. But the man was only happy, because now she could kill her enemies without even having a weapon. At this point, each interrupts the story, but Annie tells her that she had to listen to her talk for 4 years, so the least she could do was to let Annie finish her story. And she continues. From that day, Annie stopped caring about anything. 
She didn't care about people, where they came from, or whether they lived or died. We could see this when she was young and smashed that bug to the ground without showing any feelings. And he couldn't find any value for life, including her own life. But that all changed on the day she was sent to the island. The man came to her and apologized for everything he did and said he was wrong with how he trained her. He continued to say that his status or title doesn't mean anything to him. The one and only thing he wanted is for Annie to come back home. On that day, Annie first looked at that man as her father because he saw her as his own daughter. Annie acknowledged the fact that other people also have loved ones that they care about. She used to not care about anything, but now it is different, and she is fully aware she committed horrible crimes. But, and that is the most important thing here, she also says that if it meant going back to her father, she would have done everything she did all over again. Hitch thanks her for telling her side, but she also warns her that if she returns now, all she will find is rubble and death. And straight from there, we indeed jump to Annie's father on Marley, facing the gates of Liberio, trying to warn the Marleyan soldiers. To remind you, the only people able to see Aaron's message are subjects of Ymir, something the Marleyan didn't witness for themselves. The Eldians tell the guards that they all are going to die if they won't do something. They try to explain that they couldn't possibly lie about that kind of collective dream every Eldian just had. They ask the guards to check with Eldians on other countries, but they refuse and accuse all of them of conspiracy. And his father thinks back on how he told his child to come back home. He is waiting for her, and with that in mind, he jumps on one of the guards and we hear a shot being fired. Back on Shiganshina, we go to Commander Shadis, who just heard a different shot coming from the island. That is, of course, Flock, but we will get to him later. Keith Shadis has noticed the change on the island and the Jaegerists taking over also understood that most of the public supports the Jaegerists. For that reason, he didn't want his soldiers to oppose them, and that was the reason he let all those young soldiers to beat him up. Like I mentioned in previous videos, Keith Shadis is not to be taken down so easily, only if he chooses to do that. He tells his soldiers to follow and do what they tell them, because right now they are the strongest voice on the island but he also tells them to never forget themselves and they should wait patiently for the right time, the day they will have to rise up and fight for what they believe in. We jump to Mikasa and Armin talking about the entire situation they are facing. Armin is about to go after Connie to convince him to not sacrifice Falco. Armin knows that Falco is very dear to Gabby and Reiner. He believes that if Connie sacrifices Falco, that will trigger yet another 2000 years of conflict for Titans. Only this time, it will all go down inside their little island. The really heartbreaking thing is Mikasa. She doesn't know what she has to do now, and she asks about Eren. That makes Armin to lash out at her. He is more concerned about everything else that is going on. The island previous authorities are now gone. There is no central command. The Jaegerists are sweeping the public opinion. The island is completely destroyed and the entire world is next. There is simply nothing they can do. They can only do the best they think is possible right now. And right now, Armin believes that he must stop Connie to prevent another conflict between the warriors and the island. Looking sad, he admits that Erwin should have survived that day on the roof instead of him. He leaves the room to join Gabby, and Mikasa notices the scarf she left there earlier is now missing. Back to the Blouse family, Gabby and Kaya say goodbye as she is ready to leave with Armin to reach Falco and Connie, and Nicola decides to stay in service of Sasha's family, and they all go on their separate ways. Back to Flock and John, we see what was that gunshot that Shadis heard before. It appears that Flock has taken charge in his own special way. When Jean asks him who made him in charge, we get a very important piece of information. It appears that 10 months ago, Eren did entrust Flock with part of his plan. Since then, Flock has been gathering soldiers for that specific moment. And now, when they reach that point, they don't need the volunteers anymore. Flock tells them that their countries are now going to be destroyed, but if they devoted their hearts for new Eldia, they won't be hurt, or they can keep their pride and die. And that is a nice foreshadowing for the next episode, which is actually called Pride. Naturally, not everyone is happy with that plan, and that is why Flock just gunned down one of them to make a point. They simply don't have any other choice now. 
This entire thing was planned from the start, and while Eren takes care of the world, he entrusted Flock to take control of the situation on the island. The Jaegerists take away the rest of the volunteers just as Mikasa arrives, and here we get another great moment when Flock tells them they are now free. In his mind, freedom is the fact that they don't need to fight anymore, they can go back to their casual life. He then reminded John that all he ever wanted was a nice job in the military police. That was indeed all Jean ever wanted, but he changed his mind after Marco died. We can also see how Flock is being passive-aggressive with Jean. From one side, he tells him he is one of the heroes, but he also tells him he can now go back to being an annoying and irresponsible brat like he used to be. That triggers Jean, but Mikasa jumps in, asking where are Levi and Hanji, but Flock says he is sorry, but they have both been killed by Zeke. To remind you, Flock saw both of them escape downriver. He knows Zeke didn't kill them, because the soldiers of the island were the ones shooting at them. You see how calculated Flock is when not letting them know the entire truth. The episode enters the credit while still playing. The manga chapter was very heavy on the text, so I guess the anime needed to use every single minute to fit all of this information in. We see Falco and Connie going towards Connie's village while Falco believes Mr. Connie is taking him to a hospital to treat his amnesia. Falco is happy Mr. Connie is such a nice guy for helping him, but he also thinks he saw him somewhere else. Two important things here. The first thing you need to understand is that Falco doesn't know he is the new Jaw Titan. He doesn't remember the events that happened. The second thing. You might think that Falco met Connie a few times already, but they actually only met once, on the ship after Sasha died. As far as I remember, this is the only time they actually met. And lastly, we go to Peek and Magath, both not knowing what they should do next. And then we hear a familiar and cheerful voice as we see Hanji approaching both of them. She asks Peek not to eat her and also not to worry about that person in the wagon behind her as we see Captain Levi alive, seriously messed up, but still alive. And that is where our chapter ends. Not as action-packed as previous ones, but full of information we didn't know yet, like Annie for example. Thank you so much for joining me today my titan loving friends, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and to give this video a little like. That would really help me out. I will see you soon in the next video, and even sooner in the comments. But until then, don't forget to dedicate your hearts to humanity, inside and outside the walls.